seven valleys of meditation or seven valleys of sufis part 2 there was a great sufi master one of the greatest in all the ages al ghazali he says on the path of human growth from man to god from man the potential to man the actual from possibility to reality from potentiality to fruition there are seven valleys these seven valleys are of immense significance they are like stumbling blocks try to understand them because you will have to pass through these seven valleys everybody has to pass through those seven valleys if you understand rightly what to do with the valley you will be able to go beyond it and having crossed the valley you will attain to a peak remember each valley is surrounded by mountains if you can pass through the valley without getting entangled in the valley and its attractions or getting lost or without becoming too attached to the valley or you remain aloof detached as a witness and if you keep on remembering that this is not your home that you are just a stranger here and you go on remembering that the peak has to be reached and you do not forget the peak you will certainly able to reach the peak with each valley crossed there comes a great celebration after crossing a valley you have to enter into another one this goes on until you reach the last one there are seven such valleys once you have reached the seventh there is no more the man has a tin to his being fruition has happened he is no more paradoxical there is no tension or anguish this is what in the past we have called buddhahood or the uh, christhood this is what jains called jinahood becoming victorious there are many names for it but the basic idea is that unless man becomes god he remains an anxiety a paradox and to become god these seven valleys have to be crossed by saying that saying man to become god is that he has to attain to godly qualities and each valley has its own attractions and problems it is quite possible that you may get attached to something and you will not be able to leave the valley you have to leave it if you want to enter the second one and thus continues the process process of transcendence and after each valley comes a peak a great mountain peak after each valley there is a celebration and this celebration goes on becoming more and more intense as the journey continues and when you reach the seventh valley you attain to the cosmic orgies you disperse you disappear there is dissolution fana has happened the drop has merged into the ocean and then only ocean is or god is listen to these seven valleys and try to understand them and do not think that al ghazali is talking about something philosophic sufis are not interested in philosophy at all they are very practical people but the problem with you is after i finish the talk they say that he has a nice i like your philosophy that's how it goes on if they say something they mean it if they say something it is set for the seeker it is not set for the curious ones not for intellectuals either instead it is for those who are on the path it is for those who are really working hard to have a glimpse of truth it is for the seekers the first valley is called the valley of knowledge this is the first valley naturally knowledge has to be the first because man starts by knowing no other animal has knowledge only man knows and aspires as well to know more and more 
Only man gathers knowledge from all around, considers this his own. Only man writes, reads and talks. Only man has language, his scriptures, philosophies and theories. So knowledge has to be the first value. The negative aspect of this valley is that you can become knowledgeable, you can get hooked onto the knowledge, you can forget the real purpose of knowing, also you get attached to knowledge itself. Then you will go on accumulating more and more knowledge and you can go on for lives together accumulating knowledge from different sources. You will become a great scholar, pundit, a priest, but you will not become a knower. The way of the knowing differs from that of knowledge. With knowledge, two things happen. First, the, knowledge, the content of knowledge, you know something. And second, the consciousness, the mirror that you are, the one who knows, the content and the content. If you become too much attached to the, if you become too much attached to the content or knowledge, rather than to the capacity of knowing, certainly you will be lost in the valley. That part which can make you entangled, hooked, and attached is the negative aspect of this valley. That you know this, you know that, you know so many things you are. You have your notes, when need arises, you turn it on. You can choose any field, and wherever you have, there is a lack of knowing instead you are knowledgeable. For instance, if you are interested in cooking, you have many recipes. If you have interest elsewhere, you have many quotations from this one and that one, and you have a book of quotations. So when an occasion comes, you scan through your book and give the quotation that is appropriate according to you for the occasion. If you become knowledgeable, then you are lost and you cannot cross the first value. And the more knowledge you have, the more confused you will become. Then there is no way to decide what is true. Everything that you hear if rightly put before you, logically placed before you, will appear right to you. There is no other way for you to decide. There is no other criteria. This is the reason it goes on happening. If you go to one master and you hear him and he looks right to you, then you go to another master and you hear him and he too looks right as well. This is what has happened when I mentioned of the parable of Hazrat Imam Zafar Sadiq. Razilatalaunu that this woman abandoned the religion of his birth, entered into another fold. Each time she entered another fold or path, she felt that she has gained something. You read one book and it looks right. Then you read another one, maybe just the opposite, and the way of its presentation makes it look good. That too has its own logic and it looks good. There is no way to decide what is right. And if you go on accumulating, you will go on accumulating contradictions, just the opposite statements. And there are millions of standpoints and sooner or later you will become just a crowd of many philosophers. Thus the crowd of many philosophies and systems. This is not going to help you along the path. That will become the greatest obstacle. So the first thing that in the valley of knowledge, one has to remain alert and aware. And you have to be emphatically concerned with the capacity of knowing or consciousness, not with the object, not with the contents. Be a witness, be a watcher on the hill. One should become more and more alert and aware. Only then one becomes a knower, not by knowing many things, 
is to just by becoming more and more aware. That is why Buddha's simple emphasis is on awareness. Once you have that, everything becomes crystal clear and you can discard everything, all the books. Just you are aware and that's enough. One should become more and more alert and aware. Only then one becomes unknown. Not by knowing many things, instead by becoming more and more aware, one becomes really alone. The path of knowledge has nothing to do with the scriptures. All opinions, systems and beliefs are an obstacle. It has something to do with the capacity to know. You can know. You have, the, you have this immense energy of being conscious. So be concerned with the container, the consciousness, and never be concerned with the content, the knowledge, the opinions, the contradictions. And never be concerned with the known, be concerned with the known. Knowledge is a double arrowed phenomenon. One arrow points to you, one arrow points to the known, and the other arrow points to the known. If you go on looking to the known, you will be lost in the body. If you start looking to the knower, you cannot be lost. You will be able to transcend the valley. Once you transcend the valley of knowledge, there is a great joy. You have understood something very essential. You have discovered something essential in you. Something that is going to remain to the very end. Something that is very fundamental, the capacity to know, the capacity to be conscious. So if, so if you look at the knower, if you become more alert in a way about the knower, you have used the positive aspect of the value of knowledge. This is first 